Anyway, enough of that. Um, after rebooting, you will see down by the clock the little ESI logo, the little white, whoops, the little white round ESI logo there. And clicking that once brings up this wonderful applet. There she is. And um, you can see it's divided into an input side and an output side. And uh, these inputs and outputs are adjustable. You can drag them up and down to adjust the input and output volume. Uh, oops, using your mouse for the outputs there and the same for, well, you can't for these fixed analog inputs and the SPDIF, but you can for the mic, the first two um, mic line input channels. Um, and these also have an additional thing down at the bottom there. Uh, according to the manual, if you're using the mic inputs, you need to switch that's in focus, but you need to switch these two little buttons marked L to M for mic, yeah, uh, if you're using the mic inputs. And you can switch in the 12 volt, once they switch to M, you can switch in the 12 volt phantom power on one side or the other side, that's provided uh, that it'll run 12 volt, volt phantom power taking the power from the PC, but if you want to go 48 volts you've got to um, you've got to plug in that external power supply, it'll little 9 volt power supply, yeah, as we showed earlier. Um, and uh, you've got a, a gain control, an input gain, um, digital gain, for the first two inputs, mic or line. And um, just like with the Julia sound card, you've got this little piece on the side where you can manually assign the uh, sample rate or set it to auto, which means that it's set by the host software. And you've got a main master out pair here, and, a, and um, a clock internal or external there. And um, over here on the menus at the top you've got your config which you can assign the mouse wheel to do the volume. You've got latency, it's currently set to 256 samples. And um, here's your direct wire panel, like I said earlier this uh, direct wire is really cool. You can stream between different audio applications and they don't have to be rewire compatible or anything, you just drag for example your physical input to your WDM input like that or you can assign the ASIO out of pair 1 and 2 to the WDM input of uh, WDM port 1 and 2 so if Cubase SX was running with ASIO drivers you could assign your master out to ASIO pair 1 and 2 and stream that into WaveLab which would be set to receive on WDM inputs 1 and 2 and it's got a giga sampler as well, so that's really cool. Uh, it allows you to stream, as I said, inputs and outputs from different softwares into each other. So you've got your direct wire panel there, which is a proprietary ESI sort of technology thing. Um, there's a mixer panel as well, which if you flip to that you get this mixer panel. See it up, up there? Yeah, mixer panel, control panel, mixer panel. And in the mix panel you've got all the pairs in and out available and you can adjust the volumes up and down and you can adjust the pans like that, yeah, left and right, and they, they're all set, and your SP diff is there, your SP diff is also over here for the output as well, that's a nice little mixer applet, and you've got your main mix out as well, um, well that's the re, we already looked at that, um, yeah, so there you go. So I'll just um, boot up a Cubase or something, Okay, now we're in Cubase and I'm going to go to the Devices menu. Uh, devices Setup. There, I'm going to choose the VST Multitrack. And um, there's the different drivers over there for the different sound cards that have been installed. You can see it's had the Emu ASIO in it, it's had the, um, the ADSP, that's the old C port system, and there's the Julia that was in there. Uh, I'll put it onto the ES, uh, ESI 1010. So do you want to switch the ASIO driver? Switch it, and there's the clock there set. Five, just over five milliseconds, almost six milliseconds latency. Um, apply that. Okay. Okay, we're now in Logic. I mean, going to go into the uh, audio. It was previously running the Emu 1820M, as I said. We're going to go into the audio hardware and drivers. Go to Audio Driver Tab 2, that one, yeah, there are two Audio Driver Tabs, Audio Driver and Audio Driver 2. 
you do not want to use the PCAV there on audio driver for ASIO multi and out cards. You want to go to audio driver tab 2 and then if you look down here there's the old EMU ASIO installed in the ASIO driver box which is ticked and I'm going to change that to the ASIO 2 ESI 1010 and uh, Logic saying try relaunch so I'll relaunch that and there it's profiling the card converting it with this ASIO Easy adapter and now you can see there's the, uh, the ASIO driver for the uh, ESI 1010 installed and the clock is correct and everything I wonder if the control panel will open here no well, it doesn't always on these softwares, and besides, this is an old copy of Logic. I mean, it's discontinued for PC you now. This is an old version 5, latest, last version. Uh, but there is some. I'll just load up an old. Let's see. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of audio here. We did some recording in the studio <coughs> last week. So I'm not going to wire any speakers up, I'll just hit play. I'm going to get some uh, headphones, just a sec, because we've got those two headphone sockets on the front, of course. Here we are, the old trusty AKG K141s. So, as we have two, as we have the wonderful addition of two um, headphone sockets, I'll just bung one in there and let's have a listen to what we've got. Okay, no volume. There's obviously some patching to be done. Because there is that's part of what the patcher does. Um, so let me just stop this. Let's have a look at this. Ah right, HP. Right, if you Oh, I'm not even showing the screen, am I? Yeah, I've I've got logic playing and I've gone into the control applet of the SI. Now you can see the meters flickering away there are for output one two, which Logic has defaulted to for its master out, and that, but that would be wired to your monitoring system. But if you notice, there's an arrow running out of the top of one two across here to seven eight, and there's a little bu button saying HP, meaning headphone. Oh yeah! <laughs> Click that, and it's now routing the master output to the headphone outputs on the front seven and eight. Yeah, man, it's not got a lot of volume, I would say. Yeah, that's mix out brings your SP diff in and out by the look of it there. If I just click that mix out, it brings the the um, SP diff out to here. Oh yeah, let me just uh, stop this because there was one other thing I read in the manual. The SP diff has an option for how it can be switched. Now where did I see that? Because the SP diff can be set to one of two different types of SP diff. Zooming on on that panel, the ESI panel, you see the little SP diff out, and it's got two buttons above it. One currently highlighted in red. Now you might not be able to read that, but it says PRO on it, and the other one says COM, uh, N meaning consumer. And basically, you can switch using this button. You can switch the SP diff out. It can either be Pro, Professional, which is IEC 60958 Type 1, or Consumer SP Diff, IEC 60958 Type 2. So you've got a little option there. Um, the headphone, anyway, switching this HP source, <laughs> HP button in, just there, adjusts the, uh, sends the master 1, 2 out to the 7 and 8 headphone socket. And I can hear it in the headphones. However, I would say it's not very loud. So let's see if we can look in the mixer applet and switch it to mixer panel. I mean, that's as loud as it goes. Let's just um, have a look how loud the settings are. On the master out here. Oh, they're down actually. I'll just stop that. There's no volume control on the front of the rack, but I mean, you'd get a decent headphone volume. It's not as loud as I'd like it, but then I do like incredibly loud monitoring, but certainly anyway, 
you get uh, monitoring out there. So yeah, everything seems to be working all right. Certainly, it's working in Logic. Okay, uh, well I've got Cubase running. I couldn't find a song, so I just made a little beat using battery. But it's crystal clear in this mic, in these headphones, man. And um, if we go to the ESI panel again, go back to the control panel, you can see the output here being fed across to the headphone socket, yeah? Yeah, lovely. Volume's being adjusted. Yeah, man. Sounds beautiful. Really nice. Crystal clear. Crystal clear. Lovely. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm just going to try and change the... I'm going to change the, um, the latency. Let's lower the latency to something ludicrous like, I don't know, 48 samples. As you always running, please stop and close it and then try again. All right, hang on, let me just save this. I've booted Cubase up again and gone into the control panel for the multi-track and it's showing a latency now of 1. Point, what is that? 1.088 milliseconds input and output now whether it'll run even one track of battery glitchlessly with this we'll have to see let's see, let's hit play back up <laughs> while it's running yeah man, excellent. What's the... Uh... Well it's running at one millisecond latency, alright, admittedly it's only one track of battery, but it's actually doing it without glitching, which is uh, for some sound cards, even that can be uh, impossible. So um, yeah, fantastic. Definitely worth checking out, one of the, if not the lowest priced, uh, you know, multi in out rack ASIO WDM device on the market and um, look at the results it got with the audio analysis and um, plays at low latency great, fantastic um, recommended, 10 out of 10, well done ESI and thanks to Klaus at Ridi for his support in uh, getting this review done ok cheers